Здравейте! That's, that's about it. Actually, it's really great that, well, I didn't need the headphones, the Russian and Bulgarian. I had no idea that was so similar. So it's uh, actually great when, I, when you talk, I can understand that. Um, yeah, um, I'm really honored to be here and I'm super excited to share um, the, well, the kind of research and also my experience uh, on integrating social media in the marketing mix. And uh, initially, I was about to tell you about five companies that uh, integrated social media successfully. And then I thought that just five companies would not be enough. Uh, and if we look, about, we look at companies that fully integrated social media, that means that they have budgets, they're bigger, and then uh, that would not necessarily apply to well to the audience, like to the, all of, all of you guys. So uh, what I want you to do, like what, what I want you to feel uh, when you go out today, like um, I want you to feel that you can do that, like you can implement the tips right away. Uh, so that's why I moved to 15 cases and then also poured like a lot of my own thoughts into it. So I hope you enjoy it. And, um, well, it's like we, we see that social media integration is a big goal, then it all just takes the small, small, small steps of um, of tiny bits of integrating that with uh, with a website, with webinars, with customer support, and then just bit by bit, then you go to the to the big picture. So like we will take it gradually. Uh, and the difference between like what that's my experience told me like I, I was all in one marketer all the way. So I didn't like I was not focused on social media uh, when I. Uh, before I joined SEM Rush, and I was focused on conversion marketing. I was focused on uh, on sales, and then I kind of understood that I could not impact other marketers. I could not impact their work. I could not go and tell them, "Hey guys, you do you should do that differently at SEM Rush," because I well, I respected the people that I was working with, but I kind of I could get their work to my channel and uh, show them the impact and then it all changed. So actually um, integration helps to understand the buyer persona better, the community, well, the audience better. And then be because you kind of bring everyone together, then uh, the magic happens and your audience becomes a community. Before we move to the tips, I would love to well to share six principles um, of persuasion. So that's basically the emotional triggers that um, that makes all the difference. So the first one uh, is reciprocity, meaning that if I do something for you, then you're likely and then you want to do something for me in return. This is like how psychology works. Um, and then uh, commitment means that if I subscribe to something before, uh, then I'm likely to stick to my decisions. Um, and so like I'm consistent and people want to be consistent. So like if someone's got married then, and said yes, then it's like it would take them longer to drop out of those relationships than it's just like if you're not married. So that's like, well, that's what commitment is about. And social proof is pretty much straightforward. So if um, someone trusts, like if my friends recommended the hotel and TripAdvisor, then I'm, I, I think I would go for that one. And liking means that if I like someone, uh, then I will do more for them. Uh, or if I know that the person likes me, then um, also I'm bound to like them back. And well, authority is also, it's like if I tell you that, okay, this guy has like 10K followers on Twitter, then you instantly think that, well, if other people listen to him, then he might be an authority and then we kind of want to stick those people. And scarcity means that if there is some exclusive group or there is like limited offer, then we're bound to get that more attention. And with that, um, we'll start the tips. So, well, there is, you know that there is own media, paid media, and earned media. Uh, and, well, website is your own media within the whole web space. So if, like, if even Facebook owns your group, um, you own your website. So you want to kind of combine that for sure with social media. And um, 
there, uh, well, social proof is the easy way to do that. And uh, well, I love how Culture Code did, did that. So basically, they just pulled uh, out, well, from Twitter search, they pulled the uh, reviews that give them credibility, and then, well, basically, these are real people, and then they just singled out the the comments, the tweets that make them look good, and then you can just scroll back and back and back in time, and then you see, okay, then you have they have clients, they're happy, I might go for them, and this is just below the fold, so it's just one scroll. Uh, IMDb uh, did a great job with well they didn't put that in the best place on their website but still it's like if you connect if you're logged into Facebook and then you browse through the websites if they this have them uh, if the website has this um, uh, widget Facebook widget embedded on the so on site you will see actually familiar faces of your friends who like that page and then if you scroll and then browse through the website and nothing seems familiar when you see the familiar face you're bound to stop and then just like your attention is right, right there and also on top of giving the credibility and the social proof it also makes people stay on your website longer which is again like even for search engines that's a great signal um, so even a bit like two seconds plus, that would be <laughs> that would be just a benefit. Uh, on top of social proof, you would want to amplify your content. Well, if you have a blog or if you put some great content on your website, then you want people to share it. And uh, there are two cool tools that uh, websites use. So one is Highlighter. And then you see just like if you hover over the text and it just immediately Pop, like has a pop-up window and then you're able to tweet that or share that so like if people just read through the through the text and they want to tweet something that's like instant so they they are able to do that you make it the job easy for them if you want to um, single out the phrases yourself then there's a different tool click to tweet.com so you can just like you, you, the lower one um, here you can put not only the headline, you can put the quote, and then if they click click to tweet, they're able to tweet the phrase and the link or anything that you planned for them. This is like a really simple tool. I have not included the, well, the go-to guide, but it's, it's pretty easy and straightforward when you go to the website, which is clicktotweet.com. Um, also, um, this is kind of connected to the website and your Facebook page. So if you've noticed that basically, if you even open the link on Facebook, it would not redirect to the website, it will open in the browser that Facebook just crafted for you. So it would actually not go anywhere from there, you would just return to Facebook. And this is what like Facebook is really into, so they, they want you to stick there. And uh, but they are offering businesses great dis solutions, so like they could go together. And this is uh, you see here, like in um, that this specific shop, they uh, added the shop section with prices. Like they basically they uploaded their product list, and um, without even going anywhere on your Facebook page, your audience, if you're an e-commerce, then you just like they could browse like the products and also um, rating is a great thing because it again adds the social proof and there is a call to action and uh, really obvious uh, way of using social media and then I really spend loads of time doing that integrate like in our team uh, using social for customer support because now, I basically, if I have a problem, I go to Twitter or I go to Facebook. I do not, I do not email uh, companies. I, I do that on social media and a lot of people do the same. It's, the culture is a bit different there because people also want the attention. But, um, but it's just the channel that your customer support, support should be using. And uh, when we integrated this, uh, we solved 300 cases in four months. And this would not be just complaints, that would be requests, that would be questions that our social media team was not able to answer because they're technical. And we used Sprout Social. Uh, this is a cool tool, just like for scheduling, for uh, for scheduling posts, for discovery, for the growing your audience. And on top of that, it's good for customer support because uh, there's a message tab. 
and you can filter the messages by like Twitter advanced search. And once you do that, you see the, the, the queries that come from Facebook, from Twitter, from Google Plus, from Instagram. And um, then once, once you see them, uh, then you're able to assign a case to your customer support manager, which is also in, in, in the tool. So it's like really two click of a buttons with your comment. You're just sharing like, please fix it. And then also there you can add even that it's urgent. So they would just, um, um, yeah, so they would just tackle it faster. And who, so, who uses Salesforce? Is there anyone? Okay, I see. I see. <laughs> okay, two hands. Okay, but, well, who uses Salesforce? Basically, also, um, it, they offer the free, uh, free option of um, adding the Facebook account and Twitter account, um, and then importing the messages from there and putting them to a sandbox. Which means that they, these are created as cases and could be also solved by customer support team. Um, this is a cool thing if you're global, uh, but you're not always online, for example. This is a Facebook Messenger bot, uh, which like you pour in the frequently asked questions and then basically create a bot that could be easily scanned and then people can just like, like well, where, what is your address or, well, things like that and then, um, and then you are also able to insert, like you see that the call to action, take me there. That means that they're taking me to the website, which is quite okay. Like if I have a question and then it, the website answers me, that could be a special landing page. Um, so it's a cool thing if you're global and also if you have an event as this SASCON in UK um, did. So it's, a, it's a, just a cool innovation and Facebook, in my opinion, is the social media now is that's driving the change and is actually allowing businesses to do a lot more than any other. Um, when you do that, like, or when you, well, when you're doing customer support and when I first joined the CMRS, I was like, whoa, we have uh, questions in all different languages. Like, what do I do with that? I speak Russian and English, and that's basically it. So I asked my team to translate phrases for me. And this would be great for the bot, but this would be also great for answering questions on social media, because even, like, even something in a local language, that would be great to hear like, for people, because that's additional sign that you're paying attention. Um, and this is one of my favorite examples that was uh, recently actually, who have heard this, uh, about the sky scanner. No? The, 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 that was amazing. Um, well, they had a bug and instead of just saying sorry, the, the customer support manager, uh, she uh, crafted like amazingly hilarious message about what to do. Uh, well, the, the bug was about like, guy had to stay, the, the, the waiting time for the flight was like 47 years. And uh, so she, uh, instead of like, and he, he said like, what do you want me to do there for 47 years? And then she actually gave him options. And that was like, they're hilarious. And uh, then she was just like the favorite person on social media that day. And on top of, um, on top of just the creating the engagement on social media, tackling the case, also the, well, the, a lot of newspapers, I think the Metro and like even Guardian or something like really high profile newspapers mentioned the case. And this is like the PR thing all over. And that, okay, it's Sky Scanner, but there are a lot of examples that do not get that, um, well, the mentions in, uh, in big blogs, but at least some publications would be also great to have. Um, also, I don't know if you understand Russian or not, but this is something that, well, it's just also had a rude um, word in that, but basically the guy just said like he was not happy with the taxi company and then he didn't mention them, like he didn't tag them. But what the taxi company did is like, uh, he, he, they posted the photo saying like what happens when you're calling us the rude name with uh, like really the weepy emoji and actually the guy just re retreated after that. He was really angry and he was not angry after that. So it's just a creative um, option to tackle the, the negative comment and just like 
bring that to humor mostly. That's the, that's why I love this case. And um, you can well this company the Hilton suggests it takes it to a whole new level because they're proactive. These people that they well, they respond to people that haven't even talked tag their brand. They're just like, if, if I ask, um, if felt well, Hilton, I don't know if Hilton is in Sofia, probably, yes. So I would tweet like anyone randomly, um, just sending a tweet, so what's the best restaurant in Sofia? And Hilton suggests with really like they're searching for those tweets and they would respond to me. So actually they would give, expo like they, they're exposing their brand to people who are just already in the city. So next time they go, they know that they have, they can ask Hilton anything and they're kind of creating this belonging, like the sense of like binging, being in the city and being the go-to account for any suggestions, which is brilliant in my opinion. Um, and after just well, integrating social media like websites, you have a whole different range of marketing activities that you want to connect. And um, even the posts, like when I first started posting, I was like, okay, what do I post about? I need to go to my team. I need to know the news. I need to know what we're sending via email. And then I put that on social media because I want us to be consistent with the message. And so in this, even in this, you're integrating already. Uh, but then we have like, we have a lot of stuff. We have, we go to conferences, we do webinars, we work with journalists and industry experts. And when it comes to webinars, um, yeah, that's why we would even support that because I want, I don't know who's in the webinar, okay? As a social media manager, I don't have access to the admin, like I don't have admin rights, but I want to take them to social media so I would know the profile. I would know that what they're tweeting about. I don't, I wouldn't know like that, that what, what they're actually, what their pains are. And social media is a great place to do that. And so if I combine the webinar audience with the social and they, they follow us on both, then it's kind of also, the, they they feel emotionally attached to the brand. They feel it more, and also um, it provides the content for further posts. And uh, if I watch the webinar, and then I, I'm like a manager of our Facebook page, I want to put videos on that because videos are huge now on social. So what I do is that I ask the video. Uh, well, I will ask the person who does the video and then who crops the webinar video after it's been recorded. I would ask for two or one minute, like the best part of the uh, the whole webinar, and I would upload this to like native Facebook video. I would upload that to my page. I would also include the link, like check the webinar, like in the full webinar here. But I immediately, by, by attending the events that your team does, you're just getting that like, you're creating the content for your own channel or for social media. If you're all in one, they're just basically taking that here. And uh, our workflow, this is, this, this is just beyond uh, social media, but I wanted to, to, uh, to explain how we do that at this humorous. So it's like hot topic and guest. We use, we use either hot topic or like super celebrity guest or both. Then we do the webinar. We always can transcribe it if it's good because then it's like we can even send this transcription to the expert and he would write the post. But if not, we write the post ourselves. Then we publish that on a website, on YouTube, and then also this short video on, uh, on social. And then we also live tweet during the webinar. And this is exactly how you can do, take that on social. You announce the webinar on social, and then also um, you can create the Facebook event and invite your, uh, your friends or whoever, or promote the event so people would, uh, well, like more people would attend it. Um, also, um, there is like once people register, you can encourage them to share the news for you. And a couple of companies do that really well. And then you live tweet during the webinar. And also um, after you upload the deck to SlideShare to get like even more views. And to, uh, uh, we, some of the decks for the webinars as well as conferences, SlideShare picked them as the, uh, the deck of the day. So we immediately on one webinar deck, we got 2000 views, which is like really 
cool for one piece of content that was not really even crafted for SlideShare. So it's like an amplification right away. I really, well, the Social Media Examiner is basically my go-to blog, my favorite blog about social media. But what they um, do is that when I register for their events, and other people do, they just encourage us to tweet. And this, and uh, also they embed a really great picture saying I'm attending. So it's just like also social proof. Like, okay, my my uh, my friends are interested, so this is, might be something that I would be interested in. So um, that's only a couple of minutes work, just like embedding the the tweet there, like after, in the registration page. This is nothing more. Uh, how we work with conferences? Um, well, from the new newest bit is that we 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 do the Facebook Live. Uh, so instead, like we we used to live tweet, but now it's more convenient than someone is with tripod, uh, just live streaming the session, and the back office is hearing what what the speaker is saying and live tweeting as well. So it's kind of like we're combining the the, the forces here. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of things that uh, you could do. Well, for Instagram, what I love doing, even if we not in the event, I do that. I just click on the hashtag after the conference finished and then I like every post. But if you're attending the conference, just put the post before that and then let the like let the stream go and after the conference finished you also put some nice posts on the photo and then after that you click on a conference hashtag and you like every picture so actually like you do not well, I do not follow people I just like the whole stream because then people would be interested like okay this profile like liked me and then when they go to your profile they immediately see that you attended the same event so it's kind of connection already built and it's just also some people will follow you if they like the content some would interact with you or might they might see so you like might have seen your logo on the conference and just backing it up with social would just give you additional benefit uh, with Twitter they, they're also the Things are pretty basic. There's a tool that's called If This Then That, so ifttt.com, and then you're able to, uh, let's say, like you're tweeting with passion for digital now, and then I would be able to go to ifttt and just like say like, okay, all the people that tweet tweets with this hashtag should be on this list and automate it. So like you would all be if you tweeted, where it would be in my list in Twitter, and then I could reach out to you later. So it's um, it's a re really pretty basic, pretty and awesome because you're not able to connect with everyone, but then just following up would be easier. Um, and then what we do, um, we collect the best quotes of the speakers, like always, and create the infographics that look like this. And we tweet, we post them on Facebook and Twitter right after the event has finished, because then the buzz is still there, but the, there are no tweet, like no fresh tweets, and then our tweet goes. And we tag every expert that like, we mentioned. So basically, this ends up as being the best tweet of the conference. Um, here, I actually, this is my random presentation, but I, what I really loved when I scrolled out, like when I was checking that, I loved those uh, tweet that is in a box. Uh, this is a random tweet, this is a random uh, presentation by a random company, but they used the word, yeah, they used the keyword conference, and um, just, uh, they aimed at the, um, they, aimed at the presentations that were connected to conferences and actually they're talking about the really the conference that's taking place now in Germany. So they're kind of inviting people to interact with them on a certain topic by promoting the uh, presentations that they seem relevant. So it's kind of, it's, it's paid. That's, only, that's the only paid tip that I actually will share right now um, t today. But it's, it's just cool that if you have a presentation that's great for lead generation and then you want to tackle people who are interested in certain topics, that would be great to, well, to use that. Uh, and also, I, don't really, I didn't want to go into this really huge campaigns, but there is a 
two campaigns that I really love. And uh, well, Oreo is basically one of the like greatest companies that is just killing that on social. But they're so huge that even I would be like, well, we are a medium-sized business, but I would just be discouraged. Like if I would just say like we should be like the Oreos. We were not able, their team's just like super amazing um, and they're huge. But what they did is that they um, they did the daily uh, pictures uh, of like of their cookies, but it, well dedicated to some topics. So they celebrated this um, like Elvis, what they what basically they even did Batman with just the the crunchy part. So and then they posted it like it was 30 day challenge and it was it was focused on social, but it was covered everywhere else. So this is how you can create the campaign on social and just make it go viral and just tag every other channel. And the other one is, um, it was initiated uh, by social media in terms of that people chat on WhatsApp everywhere, they use emoji, and there is, um, like, there is a lot of emojis that are well connected to relationships so people just like started being really creative when it just comes to, uh, well, come to relationship and then just Durex thought okay we have to you know like we have to, why can't we ask for a condom emoji and they used the combinations of all different emojis and their designs to kind of raise awareness and also like ask for a special condom emoji and uh, this the, this was a great campaign also I think that was like quite a low budget one. Uh, but um, it's it's also the way that you generate something on social and then it just like taps every channel. Well, especially in uh, Durex case, that's also a PR case for them. Um, and if you, if you have a CEO that's like really outspoken, that's like super great, then, well, my favorite guy on social is uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, and he does amazing videos. Uh, and it's videos, actually, the videos are not hard to, not hard to do. It just, uh, there's a pixabay.com uh, website which offers the free videos. And there are a couple of apps that I could share like, if someone's interested during the day. And you can do something similar to what he does, but for inspiration, just go to his page. Uh, and again, just bit, bit by bit, just applying all those things, you'll be able to get to the great goal where social media should be part, like integral part of the marketing mix. And um, I always applied my strengths. So I know that our target audience, but my next question would be like, what can I do, what I'm good at? And then how can I use my skills best to target the audience, like to reach out to the audience? And so my like, well, additional tip would be um, that you have to work on something that's easy for you. So it just come naturally, apply your strengths on top of just uh, working with the audience that you're given. And um, this just, this brought great results um, to my team, and um, this brought great results to all of the companies I mentioned to you earlier. So um, I hope my presentation was useful, and I'd be glad, glad and happy to answer the questions. Thank you. One of the questions I had, you mentioned uh, scheduling posts. Mm -hmm. However, Gary has spoken against that, saying that it kind of uh, messes with your authenticity to the audience. What is your opinion on that? Uh, I, I'd say that, um, well, our team is scheduling posts just to maintain, the, like, so, so, to prove that we're decent. So if, like, if we have only real-time things, then... Um, that would not be enough, in my opinion, because we also we read a lot, so we want to expose something that we like, and then also if just to get to keep the accounts active, you just need to schedule like ten posts a day. Well, we we are global, so we work twenty four seven, and then then just like to prove that we are active, then we do the the, the scheduling, but it takes ten percent of all our active social media time. But I just believe that if I was not active on social, you would think that my account would be dead if there's like nothing happening right away. But then if it's a tweet or if it's a post every, every two hours, then it's perfect. Mm. Uh, what uh, do you think about the uh, 
uh, new uh, kind of researches of uh, social media, as empirical approach, as theoretical approach. What kind of indicators uh, do you put uh, uh, for the map, for the face of uh, um, marketing knowledge? So, well, searches on social media is... Um, uh, what kind of uh, indicators yes. do, you, do you put uh, for the social research? Okay, so you, you're asking about KPIs. Or the, um, I would say, well, for us, social media is a retention uh, tool. So we're not attracting users on social media. We're either building awareness or actually retaining. So the amount of, we have, we are in e-commerce. So we are in Google Analytics, we just put the goals and we actually see the amount of transactions that interacted with us on social. So um, that means that amount of paid customers who we connected with, and this is our main goal to connect with as many paid clients on social as possible because if the social brings emotions and i believe that at the end of the day emotions is what like is the the is what triggers decisions and so in a, in a equal like they choose two softwares and then basically they would choose us because we're nice on social or anywhere else and or um so the amount of paid users that we interact is crucial because um, that would help us retain customers. Hello, Hi. Um, I work as an editor for a website. So one of our main uh, channels for uh, uh, reach is Facebook. So my question is, we like. 60k uh, likes on our page and uh, article content. How many posts are best working for us? I mean, per day, because we we we'll, we would like to be active enough, but we don't want to be annoying. So, where is the best? Test it. Middle? Yeah, test it. There's yeah, no, we've been there, testing. Well, we've been testing, but what do you think about it? Um, it depends on where, when, what is your audience, and when it's active and that Facebook Insights will give that information. We tested from three to eight posts a day. The, the engagement hasn't changed and then no, one's com no one complained. I know accounts that post over 24 times a day and this is like, this is okay for them. And it just also matters, it depends on the content and then you have to keep it different if you post more. But I tell you, just. The, there is no way your content will be exposed to 100% of the audience on Facebook. So one people, like certain amount of people, will see that post, and then others would see this, and then the most loyal people would see probably 80%, but still they would not see 100. And so like Facebook keeps. I love uh, as a user, I love Facebook. As a marketer, I just I struggle with it, obviously. But uh, but I love my feed as a user because they did a great job, and I just, I don't do not see that, and I'm happy and I'm thankful for Facebook for that. So. It if, feel free to test it. If you if you get negative feedback, it just thank thank those people, and then you just like l learn from that. But it just I would I would suggest that one week you did this, one week you did this, and then it's like three iterations, and then you just uh, collect the results from Facebook Insights on one week, on the other. Also in Facebook Insights, when you export that to Excel, you're able to see the negative feedback, meaning that who unsubscribed because of what post. And then you're able to see like what post really didn't resonate with the audience. And then if you saw, okay, for one week when you posted more, then you actually got more engagement, but specifically this post didn't work and just brought you down, then maybe this is something that the the frequently frequency is something you would go with, but just the content should be different. So test it. Okay, thank you. Hello, my name is Alexander Grigorov. Alexander. And uh, because Russia is a digital market uh, on its own, uh, could you share with us uh, how you deal your actually? Are you dealing with uh, contact as well as uh, you? I don't know anything uh, about Russia. I just live there. I happen to live there. Okay. okay. <laughs> that was my question. What, what about Russia? 
What about Russia in general as a digital market? Russia is a, Russia is a market is pretty interesting for companies that work, work in Russia, but um, it's it's like kind of a, its own animal. And uh, Contacte is a great place, but you need to advertise. Uh, and they now offer a bit like uh, creative options for that, but it's also uh, with Russian. I believe that it might be. I'm guessing now the um, the issue, well, the, the reality of Bulgaria as well. That people like to share their opinions. Like people want to share. Like Russians, I have. N I miss that. I don't. We don't have as much comments on Facebook or anywhere else as we, I, I got on contact. People were fighting over each other. People were fighting for us, and people were fighting against us. And then just like people feel that they want to express themselves. Although in European world, people are kind of like, okay, if my opinion is different, I'd rather not say that. And this is upsetting. I like love conversations. I love the emotions and the fights because this is what re I really work with. So it's like when it gets creative. And I believe for it's the best thing about contact that you just like manage the group and there are people actually commenting and then they're like they're engaged and then they tell other people, yeah, I'm so angry about this, and then other people just can come as the spectators. So I love that. Brilliant, thank you. Uh, are there any more questions? Okay, I have a question. Yeah. So you mentioned live streaming. Obviously, this is taking over the world yeah. in terms of uh, events, and we are sort of experimenting today. Apologies for those of you who are listening online. So if you were to compare Facebook live stream with YouTube, obviously the two big brands out there, do you have any uh, recommendations why you would go for one or the other? Um, I would go for Facebook Live. Uh, that's, that's okay. Thank you. <laughs> no, but you can go for both, and in, uh, in uh, at the same time, you can basically um, you can live stream on YouTube and then uh, go to OBS Studio, embed this live with this video that you're streaming on YouTube, and live stream with that on Facebook with OBS Studio. Thank you. Well, we'll do make sure. We have posted the link of this. Uh, and people Facebook from Facebook well. would actually understand, like, see that as a Facebook Live video. They would not understand that you're on YouTube. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.